Ladies, gents, and everything under the sun, welcome to episode 1 of the Container Podcast. I am your host, Momo, and uh, today I'm with my co-host, Jackie. Jackie, how are you? I am well, thanks. How are you? Doing great, to be honest. This project has been in the making for a long time, and uh, I'm very glad that we uh, are starting our platform yeah yeah this is it this is it for a long time we've been thinking thinking about this and uh, yeah we're doing it <laughs> yeah so episode one we're going to be talking about uh two subjects that intertwine the first one is uh the children parents relationship over time and the second one is living a life you choose those are uh great topics it's been very present in my life these past few months, thinking about it a lot, and I think uh, everyone can relate to them. I just wanted to uh, add that uh, the podcast will be about many different subjects, and that uh, the interest is about our nuanced opinions and uh, the fact that we are very cash with uh, said opinions. Would you want to add something, uh, Jackie? Yeah, I think it's it's what's going to be interesting about these podcasts is that we're going to discuss different subjects, but I think they are all subjects that are relevant for for everyone. And you know, usually the the main reason behind this podcast uh, at first it was you know we were often having these kinds of conversations, and at one point we said, well, we should just start recording it and see what people think about these subjects and what are their thoughts on on them so yeah i think it's going to be (laughs) a very interesting experience definitely like you said i often think about the people that don't have uh, the chance to have these kinds of friends and have those heartfelt and uh, honest uh, discussions and i hope that uh, many people will join in the comment section and follow us and discuss all of those uh, very important subjects sometimes not so important but uh, today i think that uh, it qualifies us as such so yeah let's start the first topic the children parents relationship over time this is a an interesting topic i uh, compare it to the egg and the chicken right (laughs) where Mm, yeah which one should we talk about first, the parent or the child? Oh, well, it's complex because when, you know, I, I'm the one who introduced the subject, you know, because as you said, we're going to speak about two different subjects today. And, you know, you, you had one, I had one, and we said, well, you well know, these two kind of mix together. But if we've got to start with the, the children parents relationship, I think then we should start with the parents. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, what happens usually is that parents come to expect some things about you and they expect you to do some things. But um, I don't know, in my experience, what you see is that sometimes children will just follow what their parents said and sometimes they will just go the opposite way. And this leads to conflict or this leads to um, a great bond between the, the children and and their parents so yeah it's a big subject where you can see a lot of different personal experiences and yeah this is why, why i wanted to, to to speak about it and how eventually it leads to um the choices that you you make for your own life yeah definitely i mean uh that's why we chose to put them together but uh if we are going to start and talk about the parents right i think we <laughs> should uh maybe start and talk uh about uh, their the start of being a parent the first steps where you bring that child into this world and you come to that realization you know you have uh, someone a little creature that's very vulnerable that uh, is very innocent that knows pretty much close to nothing about uh, what's waiting for him and that you want to do your best to aid uh, that person to become independent and uh, navigate through life with uh, as little problems as possible. I think that 
the first thing that 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 came to mind uh, when we spoke about about this subject is that there's a lack of communication often between children and parents. There and, is, yep. Uh, yeah. And what usually happens is that when you, you try to, to speak about certain subject with them, they don't have the background to understand it. So I know that w what you mentioned uh, one day is that uh, when you, it comes to subjects such as um, not knowing what to do, or not to be sure about if you're going to be happy in happy in a in a certain um, career career choice. Yeah. yeah, I think this is where sometimes it gets difficult for parents because I think we could we could, we could be like straightforward about this. Like we, we come from similar backgrounds. Yeah, pretty where, much. Uh, I'd say uh, yeah. we both grew up in a household that is uh, pretty traditional and strict, but uh, yeah not to the highest degree but closer to the highest degree than uh, <laughs> something more moderate yeah well it's it's certainly different from from what we what we could call the traditional american family definitely yeah yeah <laughs> if you know what i mean i i think i think it was a little a, a little bit more strict um so yeah yeah, so growing up, I saw definitely the difference between uh, my upbringing and others in the fact that uh, we weren't uh, caring about things as much as others, right? Things that we mm. put little care, they put a great deal of care into them, and inversely, where super important and uh, normal stuff like... Uh, taking off your shoes before entering somebody's house or uh, saying thank you or mm. uh, asking for permission were seen as exceptional where it was uh, very basic and uh, natural it was writ it was like written into us like a program you could say yeah exactly because it's as you say it's a program it's 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 almost inconceivable to, to just go around to a, a stranger's house or to your friend's parents house and just be there and asking for i don't know even for a glass of water or something like that and you and you, see, you see the other kids they they you know the parents have the parents of your friends have to remind them you know like uh, oh, what do you what do we say before we ask for something and they go like please and you you just like it's already programmed it's you, you just <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's it's almost yeah. It's almost a reflex. You just go, yeah, yeah of course, <laughs> say please. And then when your your parents, your parents, one of your parents comes to to, to pick you up, he speaks a bit with uh, your friend's parents, and he and they go like, oh, you you sound very well educated. Uh, gotta say, you did a nice job, and it was very nice to see him say please and thank you. And then your parent kind of looks at them, and he's like, well. Obviously, like they better say this. Uh, I fucking hope so. Go. He's like, Bro. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 else he, is he going to say? I would give my son a whooping if uh, you told me <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. They made sure that yeah. uh, it's in the same part of the brain that controls our breathing functions, right? Where you <laughs> don't even think about it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. But Growing up in yeah, for those for those for those listening and going like, oh my goodness, uh, he's, he's speaking about like whooping his kid. Well, what is this? Uh, this is outrageous. I mean, you got you got to understand like this is this is pretty normal. I'm I'm not like advocating for for this kind of behavior. I don't think it's it's good idea. But I mean, you you like the way you, we were raised. I think it's something that we come to see as normal, and it's it's just part of. of Education, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't a problem child, so I didn't get uh, my fair share of um, corporal punishment or uh, physical punishment. I don't know how we uh, mm. particularly say that, but uh, I pretty much got uh, whooped only once in my life in the, with a belt, right? And uh, yeah. that's about <laughs> it. Uh, it kind of scarred me for life, but in a good way, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you see, yeah, and yeah, me too. Uh, I remember, like, I don't know if you remember what you did. Oh, I did. Uh, I do remember, but uh, the thing is, 
the the sad part about it it's that looking back it wasn't um earned that's the problem mm. it was an overreaction by my father <laughs> because me i remember one time i got like uh i got whooped but like pretty hard i remember but it was <laughs> Yeah, because I remember what I did is that, you know, my my mom, she reminds me, like, often, she's like, that one time when you did that, but it's like, when you look at it now, you're like, oh, maybe it's not a big deal, but, like, for it was a big deal, but I was running away from her, uh, like, <laughs> in the in, streets, like, in front of my house, yeah, yeah. yeah, in the street, yeah, in front of my house, just kind of playing, and I hid under the car, oh, and I, I think someone was in the car at that moment. Oh. I think maybe my, my dad was like about to, to leave and everything. And I just went under the car thinking, you know, in, in this spot, she, she cannot get me. But uh, yeah, when she, she often goes, she goes like, uh, oh, when I, when I grabbed your arm and I pulled you uh, from under the car, <laughs> you, you got one hell of of a punishment. I was like, all right. I, I don't remember it because it was It was time. so powerful, you got concussed and forgot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it must be that. I mean, that that's and, a hell of a whooping, man. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, when you don't remember it. But, I mean, As for, my, for, for I'm people... Gonna, I'm gonna tell you my story, right? I was a uh, mm, yeah. three... Yeah. yeah, not past three three-year-old child and i was um in um in a dinner right with some uh, family that was coming mm. from uh, very far right and uh we had to be presentable and it was really uh something right we wanted to make it uh perfect <laughs> but you have a three-year-old that gets bored after two hours of uh not even eating right you you finished eating in 45 minutes and it's mostly discussing between adults and i started to play around with my plate and the utensils and uh i think i had a a toy uh either in my pocket or something like that so i pulled it off and uh, i started playing on the table and everything until i uh accidentally Put the toy in some kind of uh, big uh, soup or something like that, and and then my dad was like, "Everyone saw that. You can't like you can't deny or <laughs> bat an eye." And it was seen as like, at least for him, a big thing. And he was like, "I gotta set a precedent," and uh, mm. he did in front of everyone. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, man. So that's harsh. That's uh, the kind of thing that uh, he himself regrets, right? But uh, he kind of regrets and not at the same time. He's like, I think in the end, the man you became is somehow because of me, because of that time. Right? That, 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 that one time specifically, like this is uh, from that <laughs> moment on, I think you... Because maybe maybe that, that that's it. That's like the secret of all of it. You just like the parent has to like um, do it one time, like one good time. He does it, and it's and like you remember it for the rest of your life. So when he says like go clean your room or you come home at this time, I remember those. Uh, uh... Yeah, you remember it, and <laughs> and I just I just want to say like for people listening and going like being outrage like oh my goodness they're laughing about this and uh, it's something very very problematic in some cases i mean we know we know like sometimes like if if it's it's not like it's not like they were beating us like every day and it's, yeah, i it's didn't not have what you're a about, drunk but... father that uh yeah exactly was lashing out on his family like i said it happened once right and he's yeah, i have exactly. a very good relationship with my parents right there is no problem there the it's just funny how it's not even an option in the kinds of families that uh we grew up uh with right where uh, either mm. our friends or our uh, acquaintances so that's one part of the relationship uh, right the the power dynamic where the parent is 
the person that holds that power and the child has nothing to to say about that it's as simple as that it's very very basic i have more power than you i can exert my will on you and you can do nothing about it you know mm -hmm. some people from the researches that have been published and all have been very negatively impacted by uh, those kinds of episodes and uh, i empathize with them a lot because i know that it's it's not easy and everyone has different problems in life and that uh, since such an early age uh, such an innocent child right i think that we should mm. rethink the way we uh, go about uh, punishing uh, children right the more modern mm. punishments are um, taking uh, away things they love right and even then yeah. Yeah. even then some researches show that it does also harm the child so you never truly know right <laughs> you it's i'm more of a traditional guy right so in my eyes the oldest tradition of uh, physical punishment is outdated but the not so uh, old punishment of taking away things they love for a certain amount of time is uh, still good still up to date to me at least yeah well, yeah well it's this is what complicated so as you say there are like researches that people have made and where to study like the repercussion of everything on the children like uh taking away the toys or having um, physical punish punishment and everything but it's often it's often the, the way i will make my argument i'm like me i have experienced that and in the end i don't think it's that bad because i don't think um me personally i don't think this is something that i will personally do uh in the future i don't think it's something that uh, i would advocate i would say like no this is good i, I wouldn't say that uh, physical punishment is something to, to, to be done but in my case i think it, it worked somehow <laughs> this is yeah this is i kind of get what you yeah. say i mean you see this is what we have <laughs> i mean i'd i'd go for something light right if uh I, I still i don't know right i'm not a parent i don't really know but uh it seems that it kind of works you know where <laughs> I, I often see those cases where uh, the child uh, throws a tantrum in the mall in a public space right and just rolls around crying screaming because uh, you didn't buy him every toy in that uh, toy store or he didn't get what he want whatever well I think that uh, the new approach the one that I saw recently which is to uh, stay close to the child right but not pay him too much attention and wait until he becomes fatigued from all that crying and then resume your uh, <laughs> your day never touching him never scolding him never at least not publicly right they just wait out <laughs> and they tell them it's okay you can be angry just get out your uh, all your frustrations from your heart from your chest it's okay so i see that and i'm like Boy, if that was my child, I would have grabbed him and pulled him up into the air, probably slapped him twice on the ass cheek and uh, and told him, shut the fuck up, man. I mean, <laughs> something as simple as that. And often... Yeah, some combo moves. Yes, the, the, <laughs> the fighting game combo, right? The grab yeah, exactly. into slaps into the very vocal not so vocal actually just with the eyes you know parents have that aptitude yeah yes yes so well yeah we're, we're playing is, around this... right don't take this too yeah. seriously but it yeah yeah well i think i think this is yeah this is the first episode i think we should just go and say it right away like everything that we're going to speak about don't don't take it too seriously like we don't we don't take ourselves seriously so we're you, you should we're not professionals nor do we pretend to be yeah exactly so yeah we yeah. don't have a medical degree we don't have anything right we're just regular guys speaking what they have in their heart and uh, passing thoughts so 
since we are pretty much done with uh, that part of the children parent relationship where it's pretty early in their childhood we can move on where they become a teenager right and the challenges evolve they become more defining because they are going to become the adult they'll be for the rest of their life and that's the part of the relationship you want to make sure that you get right in my eyes yeah because sometimes uh, sometimes people say well they're having a tough time with their parents during their their teenage years yeah feeling uh like not understood misunderstood yeah and yeah so during this part this is where sometimes you can say well this is where it, uh, it breaks or it passes it fails of a fail or pass and you hear stories of people going on with their lives there during the when they're teenagers and they're having troubles with their parents they're not able to communicate well they're not understanding each other because the child is in the mindset that i'm not understood as you said mm-hmm. uh and i and often he will feel like he understands a lot of things more than he actually does i think yeah <laughs> when you that's... now that i look back at it and the parents will have trouble understanding him because you know gap of generations the generational is gap happened. is real it really is yeah exactly yeah we'll get back to that because this is so important in this kind of relationship this is so many impacts and what's but yeah and what's it, very it, funny eventually... about the generational gap i really want to uh talk about that because mm-hmm. it uh, occurs more during the teenage years where they become more of their own persons and everything um is that it always existed they had a generational gap with their parents and then it's us right and then it will be with our children but at the end of the day the points where we differ may not be the same but in the nature of it it is the same like the anecdote i have with uh, my family right is my mother she loved to study with music on something that we consider very normal right but in Mm. her time it wasn't seen as such it was seen as music is for dancing it's for uh, partying right you're not partying you're studying so you got to do it in silence you got to be able to fully concentrate on your work and she was very misunderstood and mad at the fact that they she always had to fight for her right to uh, listen to music uh, while doing her homework right move on to the next generation of the family with us right well i have a hobby that hobby is playing video games video games that she Mm. never grew up with she never understood and she never wanted to understand but she allowed it right she saw that i had great fun with uh, that media since a uh, early age but she really hoped that uh, someday i'll forget about them and i'll move on to more things that she used to do back in the day right and the fact is we live in a different time where People are playing video games in the train, in the bus, with their phone, with... Uh, there is so many ways to play games. Everyone, every age plays them and it's misunderstood and it's not well seen and it's a fact of life. It's gonna be just like the music with my granddad with video games. And who knows, with the next generation, something that i will never understand and uh, despise but i hope that i'll keep that in mind and in heart right and i won't repeat that same cycle i hope yeah the cycle will probably end with you if you just try to keep in mind well maybe i don't understand what they're going through 
Yeah. But like you see, this is this is where the line is, you know, appears. You you kind of see, you see two sides. You see like in in on one side you see that you have to be a guide for your child. You have to say like, don't do this, do this, don't do that, etc. So that he knows how to behave himself and how to uh, respect the order and you know. I have a, some kind of basis. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a basis and you don't, you don't, you're not able to to, to behave yourself and you're not be able to follow rules, then you cannot you cannot live in society like the rest of us. Pretty much. So this is like one point. And on the other side, you you you've got like you don't want to push it too far. You don't want to be oppressive at a point where the child goes well. I'm done with all this. I just leave, and uh, you come with this scenario that you see a lot in, in, in. Well, I don't know if it's in America, but it's in the West mainly, where the the children at age 18, because usually it's at 18, goes. Well, I'm out of here. I'm I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> I'm going on my own. I'm having my own apartment, and uh, I I just have to leave this house because I cannot live like this anymore. At a point where, like, they're not able to to uh, be with their families. Yep. And it's it's just it's just as I said before, it's a it's the breaking point. It's pretty. Where they just go or not. To yeah. me, it is sad since I value family so much, but I mm -hmm. can't see uh, the struggle of leaving uh, living in a household that is so toxic and uh, misunderstanding and forceful on the way to live. That ties to our next subject, but I think we should continue a little further on the parents-children relationship with the next stage in life, which is uh, adulthood, where they grew up from their teenage years and they're off to start a career or have already done so and are trying their best to... Um, move on from opportunities to opportunities and it depends that's uh, one uh, phase of life that uh, i'm not too familiar with only from uh, outside looking in right it's not something i totally uh, know from personal experience but since i'm going through it right now I can put some of my uh, so some of my own into it, but from what I see, it seems like parents usually, from the teenage years, right, even into the childhood, are acting as guides and are nurturing their children in a way where someday they'll be independent and they'll be strong, and who knows when they'll be too old they'll be there to help them somehow some don't even think like that but i think most human beings think like that maybe not consciously but subconsciously and the fact of the matter is sometimes the factors that make an independent strong person with uh, financial stability and security and everything differ from parents to parents and that can raise some challenges not all, not even talking about uh, choosing a life partner right that's another set of uh, oh, that's, problems yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a whole other subject, that yeah. can arise <laughs> from the children parent relationship but uh, yeah I think that uh, if you want to add anything well, I guess, well, as you said earlier, we are, we are now in adulthood, like both of us, but we're still at the beginning. I think like if we, we had to like separate, you have like childhood, childhood, which is from like when you're born until you're like 12. And, uh, I think then you have like your high school period and then afterwards you jump into uh, adulthood. Yeah. And that's where we are right now from for, I don't know, for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, like, we spoke about how, like, 
the children parent relationship when they're when the child is young they have to be the guy they have to be the leader they have to show him like you have to do this and do this and what you would expect is that over time they're going to be um less important in the decision making of your life you're going to start to make your own decisions but sometimes this is not what happens especially when you you still live with your parents and you still uh you know interact with them in 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 a uh, respectful fashion where you, you're not just like ignoring them but when they're part of your life and they're making a, still making a lot of decisions for you even when you're in your adulthood in some cases well i think in, in our case specifically i think uh in traditional families uh parents are more involved definitely uh, and i know at the beginning we said like it's important that their their presence is 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 always there so that we can have a guide and we can learn discipline and we can uh, learn to behave our, ourselves but eventually what happens and this is what's happening right now is that at one point you start to see well you start to see the problems in in some of the uh, in, in you start to see the problems in the way that they were educating you and you start to see the flaws yeah and it doesn't matter how great your education was because i mean never I, i'm perfect. not here to complain about it yeah exactly it's never perfect i'm not here to complain about it but you, you start to see like problems and you start to see well we could do this and do that and we can improve this and you could do this better but usually what happened this is what we're speaking about when we spoke about like the the lack of communication is that when you come with new ideas <laughs> and you're telling your parents well why why we, sh we should maybe maybe do this like this and you just like drop off an idea like that and usually what happens is that it's rarely uh accepted or heard or yeah sometimes whatever. it's even being uh, lashed at you're like uh yeah i just mm. said it right there is no need to be mm. uh so confrontational about it because they start to see that uh you can go off you have your own wings now and it kind of scares them they're like yeah i kind of lost control and uh i don't really like it i'm not used to it but especially in the case when you have like this parent who is going to be thinking from the moment that you are born to the end of your days that you're going to be almost a a copycat like you're going to be not a copycat i, I don't can think it's see the, what the you right mean term. uh but you know what i mean you're an going to be an extension of like, their a of themselves yeah exactly you're you they're just going you're just going to be like you're going to like the same things and you're going to behave the same way and you're going to think the same and I'm I'm a, I'm well aware that a lot of people listening to this will be like, well, my parents aren't like that, and my parents are like that. And from my experience here, uh, what I mean here, I mean in in America in general, is that when you when you look at parents in in non-traditional families, well, of course, like parents are not going to impose themselves like that, and are not going to say, well, you should think like this, and you should say like you should say these things, and you should not say this. But when you are in traditional families, or parents are very involved in your life, this is what usually happens: is that they're, they're trying to make of you uh, some kind of copy of themselves. Not so much copy, but at least someone that's very knowledgeable and respectful of a set rules. You know. You're, you're, you operate under this box and they really want you to fit in that box. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's more appropriate. Yeah, I think, yeah. You're... Yeah, I summarized what you wanted to say, uh, I think, right? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, you're right. It's more, it's more appropriate to say like a box. They want you to fit in the box. And uh, when you start going outside of the box with small stuff <laughs> they're often going to go to you're going to jump to the conclusion of well i think i've failed i've failed you like i've failed my education yeah. i have not made this right and they're like uh, no i don't as you said i don't have any control now it's just 
<laughs> they're just going their own way. Which is a little bit sad, right? It's not a good feeling to have. I can empathize with them too, but uh, I think that we should remember that the times where we went on and lived uh, for a long period of time on our own before uh, returning home, how the relationship changed and how it makes me think that it's only natural the fact that they act the way they do until you're not under their uh, roof right mm. i think that's a very very underrated right i think that the fact you move and experience life away from all all that comfort zone all the thing you always knew and they see you do not too bad actually really good they're like i actually kind of did it and i kind of miss those times where <laughs> they were uh just there and i could tell them how to how to live their lives and everything but at the end of the day <laughs> They're happy, right? And that's the most important. I feel like parents, yeah. no matter the traditional or more modern, they all think that way. They just want the good for their children. S most of them, because I'm not gonna lie, I saw some horror stories. Uh, the kinds of stories where I'm speaking with the, the person and I'm like, yeah, you should always respect your parents and everything. And then they share me that, that horrendous childhood, traumatizing things they went through and the fact that they had to flee for their own security, right? And I'm like, yeah, maybe not always. Just put an asterisk on it. <laughs> yeah, a more nuanced uh, yeah, yeah. point of view. So yeah, but in general, yeah, in general, I think because like we, I think um, both of us we we've had great childhoods. With uh, I would say like we were proud of the education that we had, definitely, and of the relationship that we have today with our parents. But it's it, nevertheless like it's always funny to look at uh, the things uh, we went through from um, as as observers, you know, from the outside and see. That sometimes, yeah, it's it's not it's not flawless. Sometimes uh, we could improve this and that, but in the end, like uh, I think we're both proud of what we've become because of, of the work that our parents did. Yeah, I really like and how uh, it shaped us. I really like the starter pack I was given. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and you know, we we speak we spoke about uh, corporal punishment and discipline yeah that part of the and podcast i hope that people will be able to uh take it with uh lightly right yeah yeah <laughs> of course yeah because as as we as we said of course there are uh horrible stories and of course children are abused sometimes and you know we don't advocate for any kind of violence but what we say is that if you go to traditional families it's something very common to just sometimes you got you got to whoop your your child's ass. I mean, it's something very common, and it's just it's just there. You gotta get you gotta get you gotta get used yeah, to it. you gotta uh, uh, not, not maybe not it. accept it. it, but just like you said, wrap your head around it. It exists. Yeah, and uh, it's there, and it's it's not it's in in what we want to say is that it's not that bad because like. People survive. Get, yeah, people survive. Yeah, exactly. You survive right? from, from that. Most people, and, at least. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's just it's just there. You got <laughs> you go through it, and it's not funny when you're it's not funny when you're a child. Oh, you and, hate it. Yeah, you hate it. I mean, you look at them, and you're like, why are you doing this? And you then you look at your other friends that don't have a similar. Uh, parents and you go like oh well this this looks better i prefer this i prefer the, the smile on their faces but eventually eventually you start looking back and you're like well this time when you know as you said uh, my my dad took his bell out and uh, or my mom grabbed me from under the car well from 
I think this these kinds of experiences like shape your 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 mindset, and afterwards you understand uh, hierarchy and you understand orders and rules, and then you start respecting them. And whether you like it or not, this helps building a discipline. Yes. And when you jump from your childhood to your teenage years, um, you start seeing uh, the effects of all that because you start going to school when it starts getting more complicated and you have to, to learn to behave yourself because you're in a, you know, you're in a class and you, you meet people and you start engaging with people. And if you have respect for them and you have respect for yourself and if you have respect for the teacher, I think people are going to appreciate you uh, in a better way. Definitely. And you're going to be able to work with uh, more ease. And f after that, when you go to uh, college and you even after that, when you go to work, I think discipline as uh, discipline is underrated. I think it's very useful because you say, oh, well, talent is is very important. He has talent for this and that. But hard work, there's nothing like hard work. You just work for it. And I think that with discipline, hard work is much more easier. Because the discipline that it was once imposed to you is now something that you can impose to yourself to work better. Mm. I think that uh, these are the success stories of those types of education, right? I think. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. think that we, uh, we, yeah. it it has its merits, but uh, we gotta also generalize because, as we said, those were uh, not a, not a even a fraction. It's like. Uh, Zero point uh, add seven zeros one percent of all the parenting that's been done. It's such a small amount of all that effort and time that went into shaping the human being that uh, uh, we are. Right? Uh, mm. That we shouldn't put too much focus on that. But it's a part that's like, even if it's such a small part. It stays in your head, right? It it's there. It it will never go away completely. You remember these very very clearly, except for you. <laughs> I don't know how you forgot it, but <laughs> usually it it really uh, it's a bad word, right? Scars you for life, but it yeah, kind, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, it doesn't give the right image, but it kind of yeah, does. I and then, but this is this is actually what it does because you know you say well you don't remember so it's it's kind of funny but I, I don't need to remember but it's it just comes natural because after that I remember that after that when you know my mom would say something and she would just like look at me and I don't know like it was it was like a, a natural reaction I was just like I would just like shake or I would just start to be afraid because afterwards you're you're afraid and you don't know why. But then you start remembering, ah, oh, yeah, maybe there was something that really uh, Resp scarred me, as Respect, you say. So. order, discipline, those are all things that come with it. Maybe not brought mainly by that exact uh, punishment, but uh, a small part. We should move on, though, because we, even though it's so small, I think that trying to justify the actions of our parents and the parents that will do that on their children and that already have has taken a lot a little bit too much maybe so yeah <laughs> right now what i want to do is uh, move on to the next topic the topic is all about living a life you choose yeah so basically uh we're we're in this phase where the children grows up and start making his choices and at an early age you have to make a lot of choices for your future for your future career and for the studies that you're going to make and everything it starts at uh, an early age uh, yeah, yeah 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 so in terms of living a life you choose I think I'm going to speak more with uh, examples of real mm. examples right and i'm gonna start with myself uh, as a child right i've been uh, like many child many many children 
put a lot of expectations uh, on me, right? They had mm. some plans for me. They had some hopes for me. And I think it's really good to have these and to try to do your best as a parent to make sure your child understands that uh, he is capable, he has the ability, he has everything he needs to. He has the support from his family, from his loved ones to realize whatever he wants to realize. I think that's awesome to be honest very underrated but then comes mm. the parent bias where you want to guide that child to the things you think are the best and uh i think that more often than not it's it's a failure it doesn't work it often results in uh in people that simply realize not too late it's never too late but they realize and they start to um go back and uh reevaluate everything in their lives and the fact of the matter is for myself uh i was pro not prohibited but i was made so much uh, by my environment by my parents and everything i was made uh, that's not the right word not made right i made myself that's the right word i made myself shoulder a weight that is unhealthy and a weight that i didn't choose for real it's a weight that I I made myself uh, shoulder so much because of expectations entrusted on me and these weren't mine, right? And at the end of the day, I realized a little bit late that uh, I couldn't go on living a life that wasn't mine, a life that uh, was planned by others just to please them, right? Just to fit their expectations of me. And from what I had the chance to speak with uh, people that went through similar episodes or uh, very different ones, it's very sane to question. Got anything to add, Jackie? Well, I think you should go on and speak more about that because it's it's a very interesting subject because for me I think um, living a life you choose is is not something that was very problem problematic for me because I, I was very lucky uh, in 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 the very sense of the word like I was very lucky because I, uh, my parents expect expectations of me uh, uh, were also mine. So I had a similar interest in in what they were expecting of me. I had, I had already um, an interest in pursuing the same career that they wanted me to pursue. So it was it was very lucky for me. So it wasn't that problematic. But as you said, it's it's a big problem when you you have people that want to do something and want to pursue a dream that is that is very big and requires a lot of work and they're just not able to do it because of many factors first if they if they're if their parents are pressuring them to go in a different way because it's usually it's because it's it's more honorable or it pays more usually that like that these are the main reasons the two yeah. main reasons yeah but sometimes what prevents them is it's just like doing things with half measures you just you just do a little bit. You say like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna do acting, but I'll just I'll just do my whatever. I'll do my law degree at the same time as taking acting lessons." But you know, doing things half uh, doing uh, doing half measures yes. it's it's never rewarding. Like you, I think you, if you want to do something, you should go the full way. And it's I think it's it's better to fail while doing. Um, everything you can to succeed than to, to fail because you, you couldn't give your, your 100%.
Definitely. And uh, just to bounce back on what you said about uh, the fact that you shouldn't go for half measures, but go full on and not be afraid to fail. That's one of the main setbacks and failure are one of the main things that become uh, too much to bear where when you already have so much on your shoulders usually mm. we should explain to the child to the people that failures and uh, setbacks are normal and they are expected and it's only yeah. in how you how you bounce back that you should focus not on the fact that you failed and the problem is that i personally got very scared of failing because all my life i had it really easy you know not so much as it was easy but it never was too big or took me from like by surprise in a way where it made me fail i never had that i always succeeded the odds were against me sometimes but i still prevailed and when failure came i was really demoralized and uh since it came so late it seemed like um, it seemed like much more than what it actually was. It seemed like uh, I fell from not a stair or two, but from like 10, 12 stories high. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh my God, Ex existential crisis. <laughs> and I think that's very, very telling on the human psychology. On how yeah, because usually what happens is people are, are going to go for during their school years, early school years, and then high school, and you know you do your activities on the side, but you, you never experience failure in a manner where it it's, it completely destroys you inside. Yeah, you just experience like minor failures, and for for the people who don't experience any. And you just go on with your life and everything seems fine when you have your first setback when you have your, your first time where you're like i cannot make it it's it's very depressing it's very depressing because usually um when you especially when you come from from families where um failure is, is not an option yeah you're like it's not an option and it's you you have to succeed because um there's this not this myth but there's this atmosphere um, in the house. You can you can almost like smell it. It's you have to succeed because you you've got everything you need. Exactly. What do you lack? You're supposed to. You, yeah, exactly. What do you, you don't, lack? You don't like anything. Nothing. You have everything to succeed. You have a roof. You have food. You have a loving family. You have friends. You have uh, the means to follow whatever course you want to follow to have a, a way of transport and to go places right you shouldn't you can't and in the end i think it's very very bad to think like that or at least to tell that to someone that honestly believes it because when they come and face that setback they're like they're like in a tunnel with no light at the end they're like who should i tell about what should i do what's gonna happen of me right i just yeah. did something unexplainable uh you can't repair it it's done it's done you see everything yeah, and really usually this dark, is what, right? Yeah, and usually what's going to hurt the most is not it's not that you're, you're going to uh, to fail, and it's not that you're going to go down, but it's the amount of time that you're going to stay down because you don't know how to get up. Exactly. And you, because first you're not used to it, and then will 
when people it's not helpful <laughs> honestly it's just not helpful to go like well you just did fail did you did, did you not notice did you not notice that you're you're down and you're, you're just like trying to get up because it's it's it doesn't seem like something big when you look at it from the outside but when you have uh try pride and when people expect results from you and as you said usually you don't have any reason <laughs> you don't have any valuable reasons to to not succeed in appearance in appearance because there are always reasons to fail exactly if you fail it's because of reasons but in appearance you don't have anything that could uh, slow you down so you just you just fail you go down and then you stay down and it think it takes a lot of time and the longer it takes and the more it it just angers you because you're you're, you're like I, I can't get up I, I just can't seem to to fit I can't seem to find my way and it's not normal so there, there must be something wrong with me yeah what happens and, is uh, from personal experience it's the greatest feeling of self-hatred you could imagine that's what happens and mm -hmm. you become your own worst enemy and you start to sabotage yourself you know because as you said mm -hmm. you need to get up you need to get up you need to move on but you stay down and why do you stay down it's because you don't allow yourself to get up you're like no you failed and you repeat that and you're like you should have done otherwise why are you here why is it like this and you don't have any answer for those whys because you're so formatted to think in that traditional way where you're eating sleeping and you have a roof that you're like there is no way it's because I lacked something, right? What mm -hmm. is it? What could it be? And you're dumbfounded and left in the shadow. Until you start talking with people. With people that actually did fail. Yeah. With people that already went through that, right? And that uh, mm -hmm. learned. And uh, as for myself... It was uh, as simple as listening more to my heart. Something that is so typical, so self-evident. But at the end of the day, it's actually not. Because it all depends on the environment you grow up in. And the environment I grew up in didn't really believe in that the principles that were instilled match but never really concentrated on that part it's just that i need like i said it was an existential crisis because i was missing a part of the puzzle and mm -hmm. since i found that part of the puzzle there is so much hope there is so much love so much everything energy and it's beautiful and it's so inspiring to hear the stories of people that actually went through with their dreams and uh, succeeded after failing of course but they believed in it and they went at it and got up and went at it and you see them very proud and happy f of their journey and everything because it's theirs it's theirs yeah because it's it yeah, it's there, and it's what you make of those failures that's impressive. Because, as you said, if you're able to get up and then continue and learn from these experiences, this is where it gets interesting. Because this is this is where it's all everything sounds cliche uh, the, the way we were speaking maybe right now, but it's it's the way you get stronger from these failures. And you just get up and you start doing new things and things that are more uh, fit for you. And that you you love and care for and afterwards it's easier to work it's easier to to live with the choices that you have made if they're really yours well said 
Well said. I think that uh, this subject is so... It's a very passionate subject of mine because it's very recent for me at least. Mm. But uh, I've talked to people like I uh, once told you that uh, it's actually been part of their lives since forever. And they always went through with uh, what they felt and they listened to their heart. And it's beautiful. Like I was uh, taking an example, a friend that... Uh, went through with his art he was like yeah everyone wants to be uh, an engineer or a doctor fuck that man <laughs> i want to draw and uh and i'm not gonna uh, regret it because that's what i want to do there is no regret in uh, something you actually adore with a burning passion and once I heard that story right I was like imagine living a life where you spend 50 years or more or maybe less I don't know working in a career you actually despise and hate a job like uh, nobody wants you're like, nah, that's not that's not me, but I got children to feed, a mortgage to pay. I need that money. And I'm gonna keep at it. Some people can't manage the pressure and end up shooting a bullet in their head. <laughs> Some manage to go through, but uh, they need to cope. They need a lot of coping mechanisms. They need to find uh, other parts of life where they can f feel some fulfillment and satisfaction. And well, you know, you you said earlier, like break the cycle when you're speaking about the way that maybe you, you, one day you won't be able to understand what your children are doing, but you'll be well aware that. Well, it's something that you don't understand, and that's that's that, and you'll be at peace with that. And I think this is what's great about this experience is that by communicating with a friend like that, um, who pursued his dream of becoming an artist and to because he wanted to draw more than anything, you know, this kind of communication between people, the way like the means that we have today, they, they were not there before. And this is why maybe sometimes, you, you, I don't know, you could have ended up not speaking to anyone and just, uh, just you know, burying this uh, feeling inside of yourself, like deep down, and just keep it and just don't talk about it and just go on and go in your daily routine and just pick up a job, as you said, that you that you don't like, that you despise. <laughs> and That's the worst. in the end, one day. Yeah, you would have like children and you, you would just like continue the cycle and then when they would when they would fail, you would just go on and be like, You cannot have this failure. You would just repeat the cycle again. But this is what's great about this experience is that it, uh, I know you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it, it taught you that you know, by speaking about these things with people instead of just burying them inside of yourself, you're able to um, come not only come at peace with yourself, but come at peace with uh, others around you Definitely. that have seen you in uh, in the wrong spot or uh, at your lowest. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there is a lot of things about that episode in my life. We should probably talk about it in another episode, right? Where it would be uh, mm -hmm. uh, further explained. But uh, lots of things went into it. Things like pride... Things like uh, honor, right? Things like uh, mm. family principles. It's actually very complex. But at the same time, when, when you take a step back, it all became, became a lot clearer to me. So, yeah, we, we might be able to uh, do a future topic on uh, those moments in life where we actually grew as a person. Something like that. 
Yeah, exactly. And the, these moments, it's it's nice when you recognize them and you say like, oh well, I think I, it's from this moment that I started doing this or I started thinking that. And when you recognize and you put all these moments together and you see, well, this is what I've become because of all of this, and this is what has allowed me to to choose for myself and to decide what was best for myself and uh, you know living a life you you choose in the end instead of just doing just of living the life of some somebody else there you go to be in your own shoes yeah so i think that uh, we talked for a good bit it's been already an hour and uh, almost 10 minutes well <laughs> so that's very nice yeah definitely for our first podcast we guys uh you guys should definitely let us know if uh, you uh, also have uh, lived episodes <laughs> like uh these where you had to choose for yourself in your life and uh, stand up for yourself and uh if you also lived some uh, corporal punishments how huh, jackie Share the, the corporal punishment so we can all laugh about it right yeah, now. Yeah, the most interesting part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's been your host, Momo and... Jackie. We've been glad to have you with us and see you next time on the Container Podcast. Ciao, ciao, everyone.